So you can see the first quote that this student has is here. You call me a misbeliever, cutthroat dog, and sped upon my Jewish gabardine. Okay, well, where's the technique? Maybe there's one after. I'm looking for a technique now. If you use a quote like that, that's your, the focus of your analysis, I want to see a technique. Trilock faces mistreatment and adversity from others. Storytelling, your storytelling. You're not linking it. It's not presented in an analytical framework and then allows himself to become diminished. He's institutionally marginalized and persecuted for being a misbeliever. Now they're just reusing the quote. There are no techniques. That's pretty crazy. I mean, you, you can't get above a band four with, with that using technical analysis. So the good news for this student is they can, and I hope they see it. I mean, these were submitted some time ago. Some of these were submitted some time ago. So um, if I can actually get in touch with the people who I've done um, done some edits for, I will because I think they need to watch this. I mean, this student can very easily pick themselves up. They've, they've got some ideas here. They've got some material, but they're taking so long to make one simple point and they don't even have a technique in the sentence. So restructuring the sentence is absolutely key for this student. Reflecting the, okay, we're going to bring in context there. Great. What's the technique? I mean, we have got something. You call me a misbeliever cutthroat dog. I mean, there you are, cutthroat dog. That's animalistic imagery, right? Um, we could try and get something you know, better than that, but I'm just going to use the quote I see there. You call me a misbeliever, cutthroat dog. It is a characterization. So um, kind of Shylock's the characterization, the dehumanizing, or, or what, why don't we use that as the, effect, uh, as the effect, the characterization of Shylock as a cutthroat, if that's the exact way it's written, cutthroat dog, the characterization of Shylock as a cutthroat dog. I, now I want to use the animalistic imagery, right? The use of animalistic imagery. No, look, I'm doing this to characterize Shylock as a cutthroat dog. Look at that. Look at that improvement. The use of animalistic imagery to characterize Shylock as a cutthroat dog. Look how the quote just seamlessly flows in, right? Seamlessly flows in. There's not like a comma and then the quote. I've tried to incorporate it so that it flows. You want your quotes to flow. So you play around with the quotes. You're probably using a lot more of the quote than you even need. Look, that's the quote I'm using. Two words. Look at the original quote. Like, we don't need all of that. We could we could incorporate this kind of spitting on the you know Jewish garbadine, but uh, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. But we can incorporate that later. We don't need to group the whole quote together. Don't be afraid to split up your quote so that your sentences flow better. So we have here the use of animalistic imagery. So again, you can all go back on your work and just say, oh, maybe I need to just bring in the technique early. And if you can't find a technique, get a different quote or do some research on the quote. And I guarantee you'll find a sort, you know, look at the general resources. We have a platform. We have all the techniques laid out for every single quote that could be important. So um, remember, jettle.com, we actually have built a platform that does all of this for you. Okay. So um, that's what that platform's there. You know, if you, if you haven't got access already, go into jettle.com, make an account. Get access to your text. I mean, it's all this. This is all. There are examples of this. Um, you know, for about, you know, like 50, 100 pages sometimes for for a text. Just plenty of examples of how to break these things down. Okay, so the use of animalistic imagery to characterize Sherlock as a cutthroat dog, dehuman or reveal the extent of his dehumanization. Now I'm saying dehumanization because he's being called a dog. So the word I'm using in the effect is really powerful because it clearly relates to the nature of the quote. So that's what's key. If you can have a word in your effect, in your explanation, that clearly matches to the substance of the quote that you're analyzing, then it's going to be very easy for the marker to see that, okay, this student knows how to analyze. They're actually drawing upon that quote and they're saying something insightful as a Jew. And then, you know, we can add something. I mean, that's a very concise, that would be a very concise point. I don't know if we've said enough. Is that all we want to say? Reveals the extent of his deep. I mean, that's pretty concise. It's a lot better than what we had, but we can actually start building our argument. So we can extend this and have a, a comma after it. Reveals the extent of his dehumanization as a, uh, as a Jew. Well, we're going to talk about how he becomes a villain, right? So it actually causes, it provokes a motivation, right? Provoking a motivation to exercise revenge on his, you know, Christian adversaries and thus, you know, prove, I mean, he's going to prove himself a villain. Um, and thus, but I think, uh, prove myself a villain. I think that's a, a quote from another, another play, another Shakespearean play, prove myself a villain. Um, maybe that's Othello or something embody the expect like society think that he's like a dog, but then because they're treating him like that, ironically, he actually becomes like a villain, not like a dog, but he becomes, he becomes less human. You could argue because he's treated like a subhuman. So that's kind of the irony there, right? And that's ironically, I think there's another really good quote about him, like, 
you know, he's saying, you call me this, therefore I will bark or something, you know, like, you call me dog, therefore I bark. So he's saying like, I'm going to become what you think I am. Transform into the very villain that they perceive him to be. But look, that that's a deeper analysis. That's deeper analysis that takes some, you need to understand the play and what's going to come after. But I've tried to, you know, do my direct effect. Notice how we quickly deal with the quote, cutthroat dog, yep, he's dehumanized. And now I'm going to extend on that and provide something deeper. Oh, that's the thing that provokes the motivation. Okay, we're looking in, a, a, that, this is our deeper, less direct analysis. And this bit's our direct analysis. So I always think about analysis in that way, actually. You have a direct piece of analysis that clearly relates to the nature of the quote. Pay attention in particular to, you know, dog and dehumanization, being less human. And then what you do after is you can have a comma if, if you do this kind of structure and have an extended point that's a little bit deeper that actually extrapolates from that direct point, that micro point, and you say something deeper about the play as a whole. And I think the best students are really good at doing that, at offering that additional insight. So you have here, you have a direct effect, plus you have a deeper insight, okay? That's what you can see here. The direct effect is the bit in green that clearly links to the quote, and then the deeper insight about the play is in orange. Awesome. So then you just go through and you just repeat that and you have that four times if you can do that in the, the time limit of 32 to 34 minutes. Um, even though technically you get 45 minutes for the common module essay, I would just treat it exactly the same as the other essays that you get 40 minutes because you might need 50 minutes for that section one, especially if you get some text that you, you, know, you don't fully understand or you need a bit more time to read through. So treat it like having 40 minutes, which means you'd have 32 to 34 minutes if in 32 to 34 minutes, you can get four of these kinds of sentences per paragraph for three paragraphs, great, do that. Otherwise you would have three of them. You know, it's whatever you can do in the time limit, only you know how much you can write. Ooh.